Explosions and fire? What else do you need in a game? What is going on all you beautiful people? Welcome back to another devlog before Nintendo decides to strike down my video. A quick recap, in the last devlog we got explosions and different types of traps all working with some other very spicy stuff. And in this devlog we are going to expand upon the system in a slightly different way. We are going to implement some status effects or buffs or really whatever you want to call them. While I focus on getting that in, the team focused on adding in some awesome and some spicy spicy other systems so let's get right into it. Where do I even begin? This system from the start was going to be a pain and I knew that. I had a rough idea of how I wanted to tackle this and a lot of the inspiration actually came from how I implemented power ups back in my 3 devs 1 day video. Basically, I used a list to organize, give, and remove power-ups, and this way I didn't have to deal with a bunch of components cluttering up the game objects, which I worry might have an impact on performance. A small problem arose with that solution, however. I realized that in the game, I used a weird workaround, and when a power-up collided with the player, I would add the entire object to a list and just make the ball's renderer invisible which isn't a good way at all to handle a large scale buff system. So after almost getting blocked by Captain Conrad for calling him so much, we thought of a few different solutions. One of which was having a main manager class with a few bulls and events that would just juggle, giving, removing, and affecting the player. This isn't a bad way per se, but I was being a perfectionist and insisted on finding a way to separate classes for each buff. That way, we could add it onto a list and have a clean and concise manager script to handle the rest. And with such a system, I spent long sessions working during the night to get it done and I started to realize the stress of staring at a monitor during the night. But thankfully, our sponsor for this video, BenQ, was gracious enough to send over their screen bar plus to help out with this exact problem. This bar is super compact, holds well on any monitor, and my favorite feature has to be the control knob that it comes with. The screen bar sits at a perfect height that not only does it not get in the way of the monitor at all, but I'm also able to use it as a perfect light source when doing homework late at night. I personally like this product a ton not just for helping reduce my eye strain during the night, but also for being a perfect light to do homework under. If you guys want your own, go check the Amazon link or their website in the description below. And finally, I wanted to give a huge thank you to BenQ for sponsoring this episode, and let's get back to the devlog. With ending that night with no good solutions, I felt pretty beat. After thinking for a while and poking holes into any idea that I came up with, it was time to go back to good old Google. And when I did that, a beautiful article graced my eyes and as I skimmed the pages, it shined as my holy grail. Literally described the solution to the exact problem I was having. I'll link this article below if anyone is in the same hole I was. It is such a beautiful solution utilizing generics and scriptable objects. So if you guys are interested, it's in the description down below. Anyways, combining both the power-up system discussed earlier and this generic approach to the back end of the buffs, I finally had a system that I can transfer buffs between objects, which then I can apply the effects to those buffs. I had a few issues with the buffs not applying correctly, but after some bit of time, I finally had a basic buff correctly damaging the player over a period of time. And once the buffs directly is over it removes itself from the list of active buffs so hooray after a few nights I finally had a solution for buffs while we did our clicky clacky programming stuff that honestly is just really boring our talented SFX guy do started on implementing some beautiful audio into the main map this is just something that the phase 2 map was missing and oh my goodness does this just sound so good Oh, he also added platypus sounds. This is probably the most important part of the devlog. Just, 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 just listen to it. It's just perfect. All right. It
doesn't that just sound beautiful? But it gets better, he added in some crowd murmuring sound effects and oh boy does that just make it feel so much more alive. But there's kind of a small problem because there aren't any NPCs just yet, but I guess we know what I gotta do for the next devlog. Anyways, let's give our team a huge thank you for putting in some hard work, and you know what, maybe just maybe just give me a you know small little nice job in the comments below for you know finally doing what I was supposed to be doing. Before we end off this video guys, comment down below what debuffs and buffs we should implement and what do you guys think of the approach we took to implement the system itself. And if you guys want to help our channel grow, comment mango in the comments below and spice it up by commenting it in your native language. This devlog had a ton of stuff all packed into a nice little package so if you enjoyed, hit that thumbs up and check out the sponsor for this devlog BenQ in the description below. One final thing, let's thank our Patreons. I wanted to give a huge thank you to Token and now Maple. Thank you guys for being such amazing supporters and I also wanted to thank the rest of our awesome supporters. Let's give a thank you to Inconspicuous, Munshir, Tajna, Michael, and Dennis, and Deathstroke. You guys have been awesome and I wanted to just give a huge thank you for the support that you guys are able to give. And finally, thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you guys in the next devlog. Peace.